In this tutorial, I'll show you the lighting setup that I used to create this mirrored effect in here. And as well, with the uh, exploding uh, sphere from the center, there's a few details that I had uh, left out from a particle video that I had done in the past. So let's take a look. All right, so it's pretty straightforward as far as this is concerned. The one thing that's in the scene to light it is simply this hemisphere light. Now notice, though, it's really strong. I have it set up at like 8.66. All right, but I don't have any other, any other lights like I typically do. So that kind of gives you an idea of the power of the lighting in here in the mirrors. So let's t render it again real quick and see what it looks like. Again, you can see the light right here bouncing off the surface like this. All right, so uh, if we look at the settings of each individual object down here, you can see the preview right here. And down here, it's simply the mirror set and reflectivity is up uh, pretty high, 0.765 for this one. Let me see, for this one, 0.681. For this one, 0.840. And the other thing that uh, you want to consider when doing these is the hardness. Notice I have the hardness at 339 for here, and I have the intensity for the specularity down, down pretty low. And so basically, by adjusting this hardness value, the specularity, and the mirror effect, and that brightness of the light. That's really what it takes to uh, get this thing going. Of course, the plane is black, and it also has a mirrored surface set on it. Where is it? Right there as well. But it has the default hardness values set in. And let's see, if we take a look at the image real quick, we'll re-render it with, let's just change this one here. Let's see, it has a hardness of 339. So let's look at it real quick. So there's that, and we'll change it down to, say, 30. And just watch the specular highlight right here. So it's really bright. So you might be experiencing that in your scene. So that's why I have it run up real high. And then uh, we'll change the, uh, well, the lighting as well. Let's change the light and see how much of a difference the light really makes to a scene. That's 8.6. Let's just do it as 1.6 and run it there. F12 to render. And it's nice mirror, but it doesn't have, it doesn't pop like the other one does. All right. F12, let's see. Yeah, big difference. All right, so those are the parameters for the lighting that I used to set it up. And now the other thing in the scene was the sphere here that has the explosion to it. In fact, let me see if I can run this. And you can see it explodes slowly. So what you have to do is, first of all, set a particle system to it. That's before you do anything else. So I set the particle system. And I gave it, now this is the, this is the important detail that if you've seen my uh, early uh, video on basic particle explosions. Um, I alluded to this, but I don't think I showed it in detail. But notice that the number of particles I have is 512. Well, that corresponds exactly to the number of faces that I have in this sphere. And that's really what you want to do when you want to do these explosion effects. That's a great way to keep everything kind of in sync. And so if I press the tab key, you'll notice up here you have the total number of faces in the scene right here, 56, 53. But when I press tab and go into edit mode, it shows faces, 512 faces. And I found that by, you know, w well, when you subdivide, the faces will change. So, um, and then the slow explosion is based on the fact that I start the particles at 50 and end up at 70. And then, of course, the last thing you need to add is um, a modifier, and there's an explosion modifier. You just have to come up here to this and add the explode modifier like that to the scene. But it has to be in the scene after the particle system is in place. You can see it's right here. It says L-O-D-E, value explode. All right, so it's in the scene. I don't. You don't have to apply it, but just make sure it's after the particle system. And so let's just... Um, Let's just change it up real quick. Just see if we can, if this actually works. Let's press W, subdivide it. Now we have 2,048 particles in the scene. Okay. And then let's go back over to the particle menu. 
and we'll change that to 2048. And instead of an explode explosion, we'll explode it a little bit quicker. We'll just run it across 10 frames like that and we'll let it run through and then we'll see it start from the beginning. Let's see what happens. There you go. All right, and then there's none left over. All right. Well, hope that gives you some better ideas for your videos. And that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson.